Hello and welcome to another video and today we've got a 2015 Ford Transit Courier that's got an ABS light on, traction control light on, power steering light on and hill assist light on. So as always verify the fault, I've got the engine running as you can see and I've got traction control light, airbag light, handbrake light on even though the handbrake's off, uh, hill start assist, ABS and steering lights all on the dashboard. So let's go look at some fault codes and let's take this job a little bit further. Okay, so we're plugged into IDS. It's quite ironic that yesterday when I was looking at this, that the lights were only coming on when I was pressing the clutch, which could have sent me down a bit of a rabbit hole. Luckily today, the lights are on permanently, um, so hopefully it should be a bit easier to fix. So we're gonna do a code scan now. As you can see there, there's quite a few fault codes stored. So let's go through them. So in the body control module, uh, PCM, power steering control module, the restraints control module, we've got faults and also failed to communicate with the ABS module. Um, so yeah, looking at the BCM now, we've got lost communication with the ABS system, uh, invalid data received from the ABS, vehicle speed signal fault, in the dashboard we've got lost communication with ABS and invalid data received from the PCM. In the PCM we've got lost communication with the vehicle dynamics control module. Power steering has lost communication with the ABS and invalid data from the PCM. So there's plenty to go out there. Also we've got invalid data received from the PCM in the restraints module. So now I'm doing a network test where it just goes and pings a message, uh, checks on the CAN network, what responds and what doesn't respond. As you can see there, um, we've got quite a few passes and a couple of fails. Got a fail on the driver's door module, passenger door module, and the ABS module has got a fail as well. So, next thing we're going to do, we're going to have a quick look at the wiring diagram and see where the powers and grounds are, any fuses that we can check. So, now we've got the wiring diagram up, um, as you can see there, we've got the central junction box with a fuse there, central junction box is inside the uh, engine, uh, sorry, the passenger compartment and we've got the battery junction box with two fuses there. They're permanently live and the fuses on the central junction box is an ignition live. So we're showing there as well the connections on the, piece, uh, on the control module, two can lines and one ground connection and the chassis ground point there where it terminates. So obviously on those two wires there, I should have nominal battery voltage with um, ignition on or off. And on the other wire that comes from the central junction box, I should have nominal battery voltage as well, but only with the ignition on. Also in the line there we've got uh, two multi-plugs, we've got um, one multi-plug where the wire goes in and out of the same multi-plug and also a large multi-plug which is located in the passenger side uh, footwell area. So the one that we're identifying now is a six pin multi-plug, excuse the poor drawings here. And basically what I'm trying to show here is the wire goes in one side and comes out the other side of the multi-plug itself using two of the terminal pins. Okay, so initially I wasn't going to video this, but um, I thought as I was getting further into it, it might make a little decent video. I've not got my camera with me, I'm using my phone, so excuse the shaking and possible bad quality. So we've looked at the wiring diagram and we can see from the wiring diagram that we've got fuse uh, 1 and 25 I think it is um, in the battery junction box and fuse 13 in the central junction box which is under the glove box area inside the vehicle. So I've just got my test light rigged up, let's put it on the battery to prove that we've got the power there. 
Straight away I found out that the little plastic cover is missing off this view, so potentially someone's been here already before. So as you can see, we've got a power there on that fuse. And if I go to fuse um, 25, I think it is, then I've got power either side of that. I've had the fuses out, the fuses are all okay. So what we'll do now, we'll just nip inside, whip the glove box out, have a look at the fuse there, see if we've got power across the fuse. And then, as you can probably have noticed already, I've got the bulkhead cover taken out from here. I've got the ABS unit uh, connected, disconnected, and we'll start checking the power feeds and the can feeds there. And uh, let's take the job a little bit further. So before we go any further, I'm going to go inside the vehicle now and we'll check the fuse 13 at the central junction box. Okay, so apologies if it's blurred or poor quality. As I said, I'm using my phone. Um, not got a tripod or anything else with me. And I'm using a little torch for a bit of lighting. So that's the fuse we're on. I've got the ignition on. As you can see with my thumb, the test light lights up both sides. I've tested the fuse prior to filming this. The fuse is okay. So let's get up to the ABS module now, check the can, check the powers, check the grounds. Right guys, so we're underneath the bonnet now and I've got the ABS plug disconnected and back probed into pin one, which is a permanent live. And as you can see, my test light is lit up. So I'm gonna go back now, put it into pin 20, uh, five it's also lit up and the ignition is on I'm going to go into pin six so that's two three four five now this pin six that I'm in a bit difficult to see apologies for that and we've got nothing at all now pin six is the uh, fed from the fuse in the central junction box which is under the glove box which we've just checked prior to this so let's have a look back at the wiring diagram and see if there's any multi-plugs or anything between here and the fuse actually before we go any further i'm going to test the can bus i've forgotten about that and we'll also need to check the ground as well so let's go check the can bus now i'll put you onto a screenshot as you can see, we've got a decent can activity there. I'm uh, just using the scope on the VCMM, the Ford Diagnostic Tool. It's not quite a Pico, not quite as usable. But as you can see, we've got a uniform, decent scope trace there to indicate that the CAN bus is okay. So let's go check the ground. So I'll swap the back pro pin over into pin 13 of the connector for the ABS unit. Put the multimeter connect it onto the battery positive and as you can see it's lighting the multi -light, uh, multi test light up admittedly it's not a massive load but it's indicating I've got a ground uh, so I need to now check that pin uh, number six as to why it's not got its ignition feed I've also tested the pin grip of pin six using a suitable uh, terminal it's got a nice tight pin grip I do know that I do get quite a lot of pin grip issues now on Fords, but this one is nice and good. No issues here. Just before anybody asks that I didn't do that particular test. So let's move forward. Let's get it fixed. Right guys, I'm faced with two options here. I can go straight to the fuse and straight to the connector on the ABS, do a quick continuity test, maybe a load test, or I can go to each multi-plug individually. Now looking on the wiring diagram, the multi-plug C192 is in the driver's side, the right-hand side headlamp area, but in fact it's not. It is on more towards the passenger side here in the UK, just near the air filter box. Found this is the connector here, six pin connector, and this is hey, oh, what we found here. Oh, here we go. Got a bit of an attack of the green crusties. So, um, probably disturb the voltage readings now. I'm just going to give a quick check of the voltage readings here before we peel this back and hopefully find the issue just where this green crusty is. 
So let me just go get my multimeter and see if we can get this filmed. Okay, so I've got the multimeter. Very difficult to do this one-handed and hold the phone at the same time. But we're in to the back probe, uh, sorry, the back probing of the pin there. And we've got 13.19 volts. I've got it on the battery support because it was going down a little bit. Let's pull it out now, as the actress said to the bishop, and pop it in the other hole. And we've got 13.19 there. Okay, so looking at the wiring diagram, the, the wire does go in and out of that plug. So I'm just going to open up this harness here and see whether or not this is our concern as to why we haven't got um, continuity between here and the ABS plug. So I've just peeled the tape back with my finger and there we go. Grey and brown wire, bit of green crust is going on. I'll see if I can get a bit of better picture for that for you. This phone's not particularly very good. I shake like a shitting dog as well. But pound to a pinch of shit, I think that's our problem. Okay, so I've cut the corrosion out and joined it with a heat proof, sorry, a waterproof book connector. So let's now go back to the ABS connector plug and see if we've got our ignition feed established. Right, so the multi plug's connected back up. And as you can see, I'm back in, although you can't see it really. Wherever I go, I'm casting a shadow. Trust me, this yellow wire here is into pin six of the ABS connector harness. And my light is now lit up. So let's see if I can now erase the fault codes and see if the lights go out on the dashboard. And we'll call that a fix, hopefully. But judging by my last video, don't count the chickens till they've hatched. Just done a little schoolboy error there, guys. I'll be honest, I always like to be honest. I tried deleting the fault codes and I hadn't actually connected the ABS unit up. What a tool. Right, so we're back onto Trusty 4 scan now. Uh, doing a system sweep. All the fault codes are in there. We've now got communication with the ABS unit. And there is a fault code in the ABS unit, so let's, let's go have a look at that. Let's see what we've got. And we've got the vehicle dynamics control switch. Now I'm not sure what this is personally. I think it's actually a traction control switch, which the vehicle doesn't actually have. Uh, so nonetheless, let's delete all the codes. So let's see what comes back, if anything. So I'm just popping to the vehicle now to turn the ignition off and then back on again. And lo and behold, we've still got a communication fault code there in the um, power steering control module. So let's go start the vehicle up, see if we've got a power steering light on and uh, see what we need to do. Okay, so the fault codes have deleted. However, we still have a communication issue with the power steering control module and the ABS. Possibly something to look at later. So I'm going to pop the ignition on. Let's see if the lights go out. Apologies for the poor picture quality. Foot on the clutch, start it up. And hey presto, all the lights go out. I've got nice free steering. It was tight when I first put it onto the ramp. So I'm just going to see if that fault code will delete possibly once more. If not, we've possibly got another further fault code to look into. But for the moment, I'm calling that a fix, guys. 